Well, greetings again, everyone. It's Nick, Mike Lack, and Steve Fraser. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bringing you holiday greetings with uh, 1974's Black Christmas, directed by Bob Clark, who's passed away, but there are some wonderful classics. Yeah. So, uh, guys, if you have your own copy, we're watching the old, uh, the new, fairly new the Screen, Screen Factory, Factory Blu-ray edition. So we'll give you a countdown to sync up with your own copy with the timestamp to zero. So go ahead and in three, two, one, play. Whew, okay. Taking it way back now. Yeah. 1974. That's the earliest we've gone. Black Christmas. <laughs> Canadian horror. Yeah. Um, it feels Canadian. It does feel Canadian. Everything about it feels Canadian. Yeah. Um, you, you can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but it's there. So we got a uh, nut job, Margot Kidder. <laughs> Sadly passed away. And then... Uh, we got some John Saxon in this. Andrea Martin, who was uh, a very famous Canadian comedian. Uh, SCTV fame. Mm -hmm. John Saxon, of course. Uh, looking very similar... To uh, Don Thompson. Right, about, ten years later. Yeah. Exactly ten years. Screenplay. Two words. Mm -hmm. Roy Moore. Um, we've got Silent Night playing over the yeah. over the titles here. This is back still when they did all the credits at the beginning of a movie. Oh yeah, <clears throat> much much less common now for some reason. Because people just want to get into the film now, I guess. Yeah, the only one that still does it is Woody Allen <laughs> and James Bond. <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Because it's just what tradition. They do. Both of yeah. them, really. Yeah. <laughs> I like the uh, point of view from the outside as if yeah. it's somebody watching. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I guess we. This is highly regarded as like the original slasher film, right? Prototypical sort of thing. Um, kind of, I mean, kind of was, looking back in <clears throat> retrospect, it has things that feel like they kind of feed into what the slasher genre became. Right. Like they were the, the grandfather. Yeah. Now, this did come out the same year as Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre, which has a completely different vibe oh, yeah. and feel and horror element yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, this is very 1980s horror, really. I mean, in a way, I, yeah. I feel like the 80s kind of took this formula. Yeah, in, in terms of. Mm, compared to the first Friday the 13th, it has a similar type of pace similar type of build sort of thing she's not wearing a bra you've got um <clears throat> it's the classic like group of friends you know you've established yeah. a group of of teenagers yeah you've established that they're being picked off yeah there's a bit of a whodunit yeah um like it's kind of the original formula yeah and they created this whole rig for the, the camera operator to do this whole thing with two hands and, and then have, have to the, hold the camera it's like mounted to his head yeah, or something some, right yeah head or, or something like that yeah it'd have to be for it to be moving up and down and everything when when i had those neck problems afterwards there's about, yeah. andrea martin the jew <laughs> and her jufro boyfriend look <laughs> at this indeed. guy holy christ the hair the hair was out of control the mustache the glasses, all of it. Mm -hmm. Terrible, terrible look. What is with this Christmas tree? It... It's a shedding. <laughs> is that like tinsel? So, <clears throat> our mysterious point of view person yeah. is now crept into the attic. Mm -hmm. Up the trellis. In a way, I mean, it, it's a slow burn, slow build, but it it does kind of just throw you into the setup very quickly. Yeah, I mean, it's mysterious. That, that, yeah, if that, you're not, if you don't know, if this is your first time watching it, and mm -hmm. I hope it's not because that'd be improper. For yeah, us to be commenting over a film you never watched before. Right. Um, 
Although we did kind of toy with the idea of maybe doing one for one that we've never seen before, just as a like a first reaction. Yeah. But anyway, we digress. Like a as, of something. As we set this up, like, you know, they you're like, oh man, I don't. This is this is like you kind of assume that's the killer. Yeah. Um, because you know it's a horror movie and yeah. people are going to die, so there's a killer involved. We're, we're simultaneously setting up our, our band of characters and the creepo in the film. The nut job upstairs. I mean, there's a nut job right here. <laughs> Margot Kidder was was a freaking personality and a half. Clearly it's a man. Yes. Clearly they have bad curtains. <laughs> <laughs> Great house, too. Like Oh yeah, this is wonderful. I mean, look at this beautiful down the stairs banister shot. Yeah, the woodwork and everything. <clears throat> His burgundy uh And here we go. Here's some fashion for you. Fur coats and <clears throat> male fur. He rocks this thing throughout the whole film. I love it. <laughs> it's got this perfect head of hair. Yeah, that's a great quaff oh, yeah. he's got there. She's supposed to be drunk. I think she's probably. When was, she might be when drunk was, in real life. When was she drunk in this in this right. decade? <laughs> yeah, she was probably just I drunk mean, on the set. I mean, I mean, with all <laughs> Margot Kidder was just a. A, a, a fascinating, entertaining human being. I'll, I'll, I'll say it and we're going to shit on her a lot during this. Oh, I yeah. I, mean, she's, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she... I, she's almost like one of those feels like she just wandered onto set and we started filming her. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it just feels like. Right. Here's an attractive like, wino. <laughs> it's like Bar Margot Kidder is her character. It's like there's not much of yeah, a... she's living the gimmick here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Look at that sweater that looked like hands Little touching hands. her tits, even though they're probably supposed to be antlers. <laughs> okay, this is a poor reaction. <laughs> the Mona. The Mona. Look at the kitty on the right. I didn't notice the kitty the first time. <laughs> I've seen this a couple times, but. <laughs> you know this. So now everyone gather around the phone. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I never, I never liked the fact that she kept yelling, you know, hello, hello. Uh -huh. A little bit. Yeah. Like, maybe I'm just so 21st century that, like, we would just hang we'd up. Just, we'd barely answer the phone right. now anyway. Why would we answer the phone? <laughs> There's no caller ID. What if it's Literally, a I had, I had someone calling my cell phone last night and said, no caller ID. I didn't answer it. I don't answer it. <laughs> I never answer. Let me lick it. That's why I have voicemail. God, I, I'm so... Oh, this is so good. I love the fact that we're going to get subtitles. Please, if you haven't, turn on your subtitles. A, because it's better to follow along with us. And B, because you get, to read, you get to read things like, let me lick it. Lick it up. Paul Stanley. You pig cunt. I mean, pig cunt is underused, really. I want to be the subtitle man. He's got to type this shit out. <laughs> I'm gonna start like I say cunt a lot. Someone walks walks in the base like, oh, what film are you working on? Uh, I'm, don't don't look at those subtitles. No, I can't I can't show you this. Okay. <laughs> Going to coffee break. Someone starts looking at what you're typing. Let me lick your pretty pig cunt. <laughs> Go get so much bad shit off. So of this. <laughs> suck on my juicy cock. Okay. This is getting demonetized right this, away. This is this is 1974, people. Okay. They're a little raunchy back then. Piggy cunt in 1974. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't think, I don't think you could say piggy cunt in 2018. I mean. I've seen some other films that started similar to this, <laughs> but you're not going to find them on iTunes. This is this is incredible that this verbiage <laughs> has come out of. Okay, you know what? Well, it's Canada. It's Canada. It's I was Canada. just going to say, you know what? 
It's Canada. It's Canada. This explains everything. Thank you. God bless you, Canada. <laughs> also, you can't rape a townie. Oh, you can't rape a townie might be my favorite quote so far. <laughs> I haven't seen the remake yet, but I guarantee you they didn't use this script. It's not good. Um, I might get You Can't Rape a Townie tattooed on me somewhere because I'm a townie. <sighs> She's got Jesus around her neck. Into right. a professional person. I see this is outstanding so far. <laughs> And I will say, <laughs> I will say, I've never really been a huge fan of this movie. <laughs> I've always just thought it was okay. Okay. Um, Mrs. Mack, though, she makes me laugh. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I've never, I've never watched this movie with the subtitles on before. <laughs> it's going to be so much better now. That is not the same cat. That's a big cat. That's a big cat she's kind of cute yeah <clears throat> and I would assume <clears throat> now that is a great visual right there yeah you don't necessarily need this shot the I feel POV, like yeah, no. I don't like that as much although I will say they're consistent. They yeah. started with POV. They've they continued con yeah. POV. Yeah. I like that. That makes me happy. Yeah. I like consistency. Like, there's nothing worse than when there's a narrator or something, uh, and then the narration just goes away. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? <clears throat> I like this uh, piss yellow wallpaper. Oh, I don't mind it. <laughs> I don't mind it. The it's 70s. The 70s are wonderful. Oh, yeah. Because. This is really like the 60s part two. Yeah. Like we haven't gotten into... Full bore. Full bore 70s. Like this is still 60s, 70s. Yeah. If, we haven't if, gotten if that into makes any sense. Studio 54 right. cocaine off a... <laughs> off a piggy cunt? <laughs> <laughs> Top dollar too. Top dollar. <laughs> Great face. <laughs> Oh, Margo. Yep, just... Why even, just, why even pour she, in a glass, really? She, I don't think there's a scene in this film where she's not drinking something or smoking something. So they didn't, that's how they paid her, I'm sure. Mrs. Mac is a delight. <laughs> I like that she's both an authority figure and also one of the girls. Oh, yeah. Like... She, I think she, that's well done. She's going to slam a few back at the bar herself. There we go. A little shadow play for you. Yeah, I like that. There's a lot of great elements about this. I just feel like there isn't enough payoff at the end for me. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll, we can discuss that when we hit it. A lot of great camera work, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they gave her a moo, moo for Christmas. <laughs> and they're excited about it. Oh, Mrs. Uh, Mack. Oh, yeah, she, she's got it all. You dirty wrong. birdie. Look at you. <laughs> Oh, that a girl. <laughs> now you can just buy this at a store. You need... She had to put some effort into that shit. Like cough syrup here. <laughs> well, she's even giving a little shimmy there while she's drinking it. Well, she put down a good Sucking gulp. Sucking it back there. That's a big gulp. <laughs> Reminds me of my grandmother. <laughs> And she's drunk already? <laughs> Did we get confirmation if those are hands or antlers? Need a wide shot, I don't know. Good rotary phone. Yeah, Andrea Martin here. Um, 
if anyone's not familiar with SCTV, uh, look it up. And it's uh, it was Second City Television out of Toronto, mm -hmm. which was Canadians' answer to Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And featured all of the Canadian stars like Eugene Levy and John Candy and Andrea Martin and uh, a whole list of mm -hmm. um, Dave Thomas, um, the other guy that I can't think of his name right now. Mm -hmm. um, hilarious stuff. She's very pretty. I, I really like Olivia Hussey. And, uh, ever seen Psycho 4? Nope. Well, she plays Norman Bates' mother in that film. Really? It's about 20 years. I mean, about 20 years later. It's all done like flashbacks, but she's phenomenal. Huh. So this is kind of good, right? She's established that she needs to talk, mm -hmm. quote unquote, to her boyfriend, mm -hmm. indicating that it, there's some sort of bad news. Yeah. Um, Turbulence. Right. <laughs> Which actually sets up a couple of great plot points later on. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I... there's my girl, Mac. Yeah. It's like, ah, it's like, of course, this is hardly the ideal place for hiding your booze. Looks like the same bottle. <laughs> the same amount is gone out of the bottle. Why not reuse the same prop? Why not? Why spit it out, dude? What a waste. <clears throat> what? She's a great character. <laughs> They look like hands. They look like hands. <laughs> Is are they supposed to be hands? Claire is spelled very weird on our subtitles yeah. right now. C L A R E. <laughs> there we go. And they kind of spoiler alert this by putting this image on the front cover, don't they? Yeah, on, on the freaking poster. Like, what a visual, right? Yeah. Beautiful. Um, did they say what day of the week that was? No. Okay. I was just trying to, not that it matters, but as far as timeline goes, when I watched this recently, mm -hmm. I was trying to keep track of how many days had gone by okay. for the timeline's sake, because we're going to get introduced to this man. Oh, yeah. The father, the, of the, the girl who just saw. The father, right. Suffocated. And I feel like part of the thing that I don't like about this movie is his reaction and the timeline of, okay. like, the missing person case that he's involved in. Okay. The urgency of his character. How long she's been gone. Right. And <clears throat> so he's there to pick her up. Mm -hmm. There's a guy right up my alley. Yeah, he's got your hair. Similar, yeah. He's a thin sucker. I talk about plot convenience. <laughs> um, I can't get over the way they're spelling Claire. <laughs> like somebody just didn't know how to do it. Um, it's Canadian spelling. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Let's blame it all on Canada. I'm sure sorry. I was gonna say the he. This guy wouldn't know, like, the odds of him knowing this girl on campus. Yeah, probably thousands of people on campus. Right. So I buy that, oh, there she is, Lushy. Um, <laughs> Sloshing it back again. <laughs> I'd buy that he would go, oh, the sorority, yeah, let me show you where that is. But yeah. he then made a he made a comment, like, I haven't seen Claire. Like, he knows who that fuck yeah. that is. Randomly. My ass. Ho, 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 fuck is a great line. <laughs> this is... There's the Afghans that we always love and talk yeah. about that somebody's knitting. These are... 
sight gags. Um, hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you can't rape a Tony. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Got a long way to go. I love that this I mean, he's so like conservative, right? Oh yeah. And everything like, is everything's dirty in this movie. <laughs> ah! Like I don't think that's gonna help. And she's just like an enabler, like Mrs. Mack is wonderful. Oh, she, 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 she. This like is... A, she's been in this town way too fucking long. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's hard for me to put some of these things into context because it was 1974. Yeah. So it's, you know, before my time, so yeah. to speak. Um you know, a lot of these horror movies of the 80s that we watch. Yeah. You know, we were alive. We've got a synergy there. Right. They're like, we kind of have memories of those, yeah. those times and places. <clears throat> Even though, not maybe not the situations, but at least <laughs> the time frame. Yeah. I can't put myself in 1974. No. Um, although, I don't think it was really all that different than 1984. Like, the progression from 74 to 84, not nearly as much as... 84 to, like, 94? Right, right. Yeah. Like, this gal's got some sass. <laughs> In the cat cloy. Claude. 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 Claudikins. Claudikins. I want to know who that other cat was. She only put on half her lipstick. Well, <laughs> she might be half in the bag. That is really <laughs> oh, bad. Sure she... uh. Yeah, the cat made you do it, I'm sure. <laughs> cat made you do it. Balls? Did you say balls? <laughs> I love the dialogue in this movie. <laughs> Can we get another phone call in here? Because I can't wait. <laughs> you little prick. <laughs> you little prick. It's so good. These, these who, who, calls, just who calls fucking... their cat a prick? <laughs> Me? This guy is such a, such a fucking straight man. It's like, he just... <laughs> and there's a little... Yeah! <laughs> stick it to him. She's a saucy lady. I, I want to be her friend. I really do. <laughs> I don't know why I've gravitated to her, of all people. <clears throat> I mean, the main girl, Jess, is that her name? Yeah. Oh, there's the daughter, so okay. Yeah. I'm down. This is this is good. I mean, Jess is probably the one that I think is the most attractive. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm pregnant. Okay. And this is not the same guy that just directed the old man to the frat house, no, right? No, it's not. I no. didn't think so. I like that other guy better. Yeah, this is uh, Kier Della from uh, 2001. I've never seen it. I saw it. I don't care for it. That's probably why I didn't see it, because I just don't get into stuff like that. Yeah, I just... Um, <clears throat> so, she wants to abort said baby, is that correct? Yeah, she because she... Basically, she, she wants to build her ed education, start a career, all that type of stuff. She doesn't want to halt all that stuff for a child. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. Yeah. But he's on the other end of the spectrum. And he's got a big, what is it, audition? Re yeah, recital. Re recital, thing. okay. Yeah. He's been up, I think he says he's been up for like three days straight or whatnot. Because he's just this, this compulsive, obsessive guy. It's got to be perfect. Yeah, he's a good heel. I like it. Yeah, yeah. He's the... 
is a fantastic foil for because because I mean obviously we get into the whole film. There's misdirection and yeah, second guessing and stuff like that. But well, it's like, like a whodunit. It, it, so. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it works towards. It works great for the relationship first off, and then it works for the second the the, the, the building reasonable the doubt. horror yep. plot going on behind it, and it causes so much more emotional disturbance for her going forward because she's got this stuff going on that she's dealing with this weird frenetic call or whatnot that's terrorizing her and everything. So, I mean, it, it creates more chaos for the character. How awesome is this? Isn't she gives it? the booze to the kid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So many things don't play, uh, wouldn't play in 2018. But, I mean, that was me as a kid, right? Like, my, I'd get champagne on New Year's Eve. Okay. My grandpa would give me his Budweiser. No. Like, I mean, not to have a whole one, obviously, but I would have a sip. Okay. Um, I hate it. Well, I hate it now. I, no. Apparently, I liked it then when I was five or six. I've never had any, so. Hello? So here again, yeah. she's just yelling angrily. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, here we go. Billy. So, see, again, she wouldn't just You're keep just yelling. Up now. Right. Yeah, you would. And so the caller, wait, the caller isn't Billy. The caller is identifying. Well, it, it almost comes off as like. A split personality yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, something along those lines, yeah. So the call the caller the caller is like the caller's supposed to be a woman talking to Billy, is that? <laughs> um, Margot Kidder not drinking in this scene. She's smoking now. Well, she's been smoking she, every time. If she ain't drinking, she's smoking. So this is still just the next day. Is next? Yeah, this is. So we had, so we're on day two of this whole thing because we have right. night, a day, a night, a day. Um, wait, there was another night. Yeah, because they were because they were at the all the others were at the Christmas party with the booze and everything. Or no, no. Again, it, like it, you said, it's a little confusing. I think it's still just the next day. I feel like maybe it's nighttime now. Well, the exterior of the, the police station was daytime. Oh, it was. So. Yeah, see, it's the, it's still the same day. Okay. So they had the party at night. The, the guy got in and killed the woman. Yeah. She's up in the attic. The next day, the, daughter, the dad comes and says, I got to pick up my daughter at 1 o'clock. And then... All of this has been in the afternoon, and now it's evening, okay. and, oh, that one's empty. Shit. <laughs> um, now it's evening, and they feel like she hasn't come around, so we got to uh -huh. get the police. <laughs> this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Fellatio 20880. <laughs> so, this goes back to that. The Klondike. The Cl well, yeah. yeah the, 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 um, the three letter. The exchange. Three yeah. It's a new exchange. F E. So, um, we've talked about this in previous commentaries. <laughs> yeah. um, I love the fact that it's. He doesn't know what fellatio yeah, means. Fucking clueless. Um, which, that's the comedy in the scene. <laughs> so, I. Am in love with the whole um, exchange thing. Uh -huh. Now the exchange thing happened before area codes, so you okay. didn't have to dial a ten-digit area yeah. code. Yeah. Okay. And you know it was really only the seven digits, which even as a kid we only dialed mm. so area codes and let if it was long out of state. Out of right. state. Yeah. Um, so the exchange, many times. The first two letters of the they like they made the exchange um, be the town that they were in, mm -hmm. um, or the the metropolitan area that they were in. Mm -hmm. So, 
um, you know, I, I can't even think of an example, um, but the, uh, like, Tampa, the T-A would be the first two letters of whatever that works out to be, Yeah. Um, would be the first two letters of all of the phone numbers in Tampa. Okay. Um, then they started running out of words and numbers, and so they had to expand and expand, and yeah. then they got into area codes when they ran out of numbers and people yeah, more combinations more telephone well more people out. got telephones yeah, too everything maxed out there is a super article everyone needs to go look at the super article on wikipedia about phone exchanges and it has the lists of <laughs> of what some of them were so that like you can look up your existing phone number <laughs> and see what the word would have been <laughs> or what different they usually yeah. each combination has th four or five yeah. Combination. So wait, well, yeah, yeah, um, this is... he's obviously got things on his mind. He's yeah. sweating. Um, anyway, look up the Wikipedia yeah. about exchanges. Super fascinating. Yeah. This is Deacon <laughs> deterioration of a psyche. Well, yeah. I mean, he's been practicing for three days. He's already an obsessive compulsive neurotic. Yeah. And now. He's that all, that bitch girlfriend is going to have an abortion. Yeah. Which means he suddenly cannot play the piano at mm -hmm. all. And it's, it's interesting because, I mean, we, we've brought up the, the this subject matter before with Nightmare 5. Where I think a lot of that stuff didn't quite get handled quite as properly in that film. The abortion stuff? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think... Maybe because this boils down more to like a character drama aspect of it. It's not really trying to tackle an issue. It's trying to deal with the ramifications between the two characters. Felt like in Nightmare 5, they're trying to be more topical about it. Trying to state a message for the audience. Yeah, it was hot button. Yeah. John Saxon. Just look at that fur. So you don't see a man walking around the fur no more, which is a damn shame. <laughs> so here we have the great John Saxon. Yes. Oh, I've been I taking a rope. I think he's still wearing a piece. Um, yeah, it kind of looks like it. Yeah. Um, this is how I knew the movie was Canadian when he said, "I've been taking a <laughs> <laughs> oat." Oat in the boot. Um. I was like, oh, he's Canadian. And uh, yeah. then I realized that Andrea Mar I, like I knew Andrea Martin was Canadian. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I bet this whole thing was Canadian. <laughs> um, the great John Saxon playing mm -hmm. a cop. <laughs> I feel like you should be doing something too, sir. <laughs> I mean, okay, so in his defense, it's the same day. Yeah. It's just nighttime. Mm -hmm. She's drunk. <laughs> She's still drunk. <laughs> still, yeah. Still. <laughs> Not drunk again, still drunk. I like that she's just got a Playboy centerfold. <laughs> and. <laughs> again, I think. They she's just... like slurring her words. <laughs> like, is this act method acting 101? Like. To imply that she's actually acting in a certain way. I think this is just reality. Yep. Captured on fucking film. It's like Margo is drunk. Okay, run the roll, roll the roll the camera. See what she's gonna do next. Because <laughs> <laughs> who scripts this shit? No one. You don't script this stuff. You just. Yeah, like just she's let it like she's ad libbing. <laughs> I mean, she's talking she about... She probably had, like, two lines of dialogue that turned into 12. She's talking... <laughs> Literally, her conversation right now is about going to the zoo and timing out how long it takes for animals to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening right now. We love you, Margo. Well. You're, you're one of a kind.
This is where the script picks back up. Yeah, I, we just took a little detour there. Zebras take 30 seconds, turtles take three days. Got it. It's so long. <laughs> Don't want to be a turtle. This is actually good, though. Because... Oh, yeah. Now she's... Now she's got her bottle. Yeah. Now we got some motivation while she's a drunk. She feels she's a little persecuted around the house. Yeah. Well, no shit. But it's probably the fact that she usually is drunk. So now she just gets more drunk. More often. And I like that <clears throat> she brought up the fact that she might be dead. Which... Yeah. I feel like that doesn't happen a lot. Like, in <sighs> horror movies, you don't just assume that they're dead. Yeah. It's always a reveal that they're dead. Yeah. Nobody ever goes, I bet he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I like this buffalo check jacket he's got on here. Yeah. And now he's going to take well, the mic stand. He's got the turtleneck, which we don't care for. No, we much. don't care for we a turtleneck, no. But he's... It's although it's very similar to the one I'm wearing right now, actually. With uh, very deep green. Deep green, yeah. Mine's a quarter zip, but um, this is like a ten thousand dollar piano, <laughs> yeah. by the way. And it didn't look like he was destroying a fake piano. Oh no, I don't think so. <clears throat> I mean, I, li I like so much that like his story could be like his own psychological drama of some sort. Well, <laughs> we always say that. Any good movie could be rewritten from the point of view of the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And I think they did a good job of that here. Yeah. And now here comes this guy, the quaff, who's been taking Claire out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's not out. They don't say out. But there is just that little hint of, oh, <laughs> so now we're gonna this is a search party yes after only a day 12 hours or whatever 12, I feel like that's know, a little unrealistic less than 12 hours after he's probably reported it Oh, wait, 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 wait. This is for the 13-year-old girl. Okay. Not for... Okay, not for the... This uh... is the search for the 13-year-old. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Good mustache there on a... Oh, yeah. Norm MacDonald-looking cop. <laughs> it does. I got Nacho Libre there. <laughs> Part of me thinks that this is just a wasted story, but then part of me thinks, well, maybe they're leading you to believe that they're connected in some way. Yeah, and then uh, the thread never comes around to connect with anything else in the movie. Right, that's, it's almost that's like... That's why I forgot about it here. This is just, like, what is happening in the lives of yeah. the people. <clears throat> yeah. Which I guess is okay. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Like, it's a natural progression of what they would be doing. Yeah. Where you, where you just got, got this maniac in the attic disrupting everything, which is, which is the thing to do is show people... Living in, their lives. Living their lives, going about the different things that they deal with, and then Wild Card shows up and starts creating murder and mayhem. Oh, uh, Claude. Claude. Licking the... Aw. Oh. Yeah. Uh. I love when people talk to cars like that. <laughs> Is that a baby seal in that picture up there on the right? <laughs> Where's our timestamp on this thing? We're uh, 39 minutes. 39, in. okay. And what's the runtime on this one? Oh, I don't know. Give me a 
sec. <clears throat> 98 minutes. 98. 100. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll go. A little, little short of the halfway point. It feels long. This movie feels long yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. And maybe it's because, really, there's only been one person killed. Yeah. And not a lot of suspense. You're like you said, it's a slow build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when you only have one murder and then the story is based on everyone wondering what happened to that person mm -hmm. as opposed to everyone also being afraid for their own yeah. lives... It really takes some time to yeah. get going. Yeah. That's a great question, lady. How did the cat get up there? Because yeah. cats can't climb ladders. No, they can't. <laughs> and now she's yelling at the taxi again, which makes me happy. She can. This fat woman can barely get up the ladder herself. You're telling me the cat climbed up there and opened the lid? <laughs> opened the lid. Oh, well, now actually it makes more sense that, <laughs> that he went down and got the cat and brought it with him. Maybe. The lure. That's the only explanation yeah. I can think of. That may, I mean, and it does make sense because yeah. they've shown him going down into the, mm -hmm. into the house. Yeah. Nice shot. Yeah, the hook. Yeah. She's really talking to that cat like it's a person. Yeah. There, I go. there, this is good. I mean, I don't oh, know. I'm not sure how that would work. I don't know if that's realistic, but. <laughs> Well, I had a pulley on it, so I mean... I guess. I mean, you'd in, really in, have to swing nuts. it the right way, though. Yeah. Meanwhile, the cabbie... <laughs> Meter's running. Yeah, that's right. I mean, just think about all the fare he could be picking up. And <laughs> he's sitting outside this, yeah. this house, waiting. <laughs> Got plenty of other drunkards to drive home tonight. Yeah, like Margot Kidder. <laughs> I like those street lamps. Uh, here we go. Uh, now he's going to throw a tantrum? Why? Yeah. Because he's mentally ill, I guess. Yeah. But what triggered it? It's not like he was trying to kill somebody and they got away or Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I like that the dad is partaking in this mm -hmm. because he's there. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't know if you've noticed that he still doesn't have a lot of urgency. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. I mean, and he had that line of dialogue about, you know, oh, I, I feel like I should be doing something. He should be more insistent about, about, about things. Yeah. What, what the fuck is with the mustache that on That mustache! Him? Look at this thing! What the fuck is that? That is incredible. <laughs> things are... <laughs> I mean, it might it's be, it's probably it's glued fucking, on, but. <laughs> it's a fucking moss on his face or something. And I will say, you know, here he, there was yeah. great, because there yeah. was a moment there where he thought. It was my daughter or something, maybe. And then there was relief. Yeah, then that it wasn't, then, then, and then she comes, and and he's got to be, be like, I, I, I understand how you feel. Oh my God, is this another prank call here? Oh, uh, here we go. Oh, give it to me. It 
See, nobody <laughs> says, who is this? <laughs> Help me, stop me. I just... I find her end to be not realistic. I can understand being kind of paralyzed with fear a little bit. You're terrified. I would get it. If but, but you know, holding on this long, yeah. If there was some sort of threat, but yeah. this is all just nonsense. Yeah, later on it makes more sense because because the, the phone company trying to trace the call. Right. Oh, she's up there. <laughs> Nice again, the shadow stuff. I like the shadows. I like this house. Yeah. I like this shot too. The photography is really good. Get, get, there's some really fantastic shots later on. And uh, this is wonderful, suggestive stuff. I mean, that's awesome and yeah. terrifying. Yes. Because again, much like Halloween, it's what you don't see yeah. that is so scary. Just, just the subtlety of the moment, letting it play. Peter! <laughs> and now, you know that he is... Creeping around the house. Insane. Yeah. He's, he's... And creeping around the house. Yeah. So it's very possible that yeah. he's the killer. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to hold. Don't want to hold. How awful. Like, out of all these movies where they call 911... And then they're like, I'm on hold. Nobody's on hold at 911, for the record, no, ever. No, no, They keep you on the line. These people oh, are... yeah, did you see that? She said something about having an adult, rational conversation. Oh, yeah. So that, again, leads you to believe, just by her saying that, yeah. that he is neither adult nor rational. Yeah. Both of which are qualities of the child calling or the whatever. Yeah. And meanwhile, Daddy over here. Yeah. One of your <laughs> boyfriends. This, yeah, this, this, guy, this guy is like the worst fucking cop. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> he doesn't give a rat's ass. He has no I mean, fucking clue. In the grand scheme of things, though, he's right. Right. Yeah. The precinct is busy with this murdered 13-year-old. Yeah. A prank phone call is not going to garner uh, right. mo mobilizing a man. Right, I understand that, but... I mean, his delivery makes it... Yeah. That's what sets you off. But yeah. I think that's d done flippant, by design. Very right. flippant. I'm actually kind of afraid of this guy. Yeah. He said he was leaving the mm -hmm. conservative. He wants to the be a priest. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see this guy as a priest. No. And I like that he's just telling her, oh, we're getting married. Yeah. He's very controlling. And she's like, uh... Excuse me. You, him saying that they're going to get married is no different than her saying, we're getting an abortion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, the one is making the decision for the both of them. Right. At least with a marriage, it requires both parties being in consensual 
agreement about it. Right. Whereas hers doesn't have to yeah, be. Yeah, it's 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 as, and, as much as people will debate it, it is it <coughs> it it, it, it I'm trying to put this the right way. It's within her own personal consent. Right. Right. She does she does it physically yes. or doesn't do it physically. Yeah. Um, I, I find it interesting that it's 1974 mm -hmm. and they have this strong, fe like a female lead yeah. who is saying, like, I'm making decisions about, my, about myself. She, she's very sophisticated, very down to earth, mature. progressive. Yep. Yeah. Which I, would, I mean, that's what the main thing I love about this film is that they have that character. So, again, like you said, very progressive for the time. And cast so extremely well. Right. And <laughs> I here... just love this guy. He's got such a vacant, like, I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about look in his eye. The fucking cop. And it's funny that... There you go. Slap a sign on detectives. Yep. <laughs> I like the fact that... Uh... <laughs> Well, oh, this 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 is the other half the fellatio gag. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the guy in the background is the he's the whole scene. <laughs> he's being this whole scene. Every time I watch this movie, I'm that guy. Yep. Um. <laughs> this is the slow walk over. There, there's a uh, some bonus features on this disc, <laughs> and I don't remember if it was the man uh, Saxon or the other guy. <laughs> One of them new exchange, um, <clears throat> fellatio. They they apparently these two. Um, had a debate about the correct pronunciation of fellatio. <laughs> one of them thought that it was pronounced fellatio, and the other one had a different like pronunciation. Like or something. Something, yeah. Fellatio and, or something. Yeah, and Saxon, it was he was right, and Saxon was wrong. <laughs> and meanwhile, everyone's she laughing. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> something dirty. That's you right now. <laughs> That's exactly me. And I'm Saxon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need some water. Take a break. Take over. Oh. Uh, uh, meanwhile, at the abortion house. <laughs> he's been he's been fucking around with the <laughs> Christmas tree. He's got some, he's some got that, tinsel that wafy or... shit on him. <laughs> Look at this fucking tree. It's like a ghost tree. <laughs> It's got hair all over it. <laughs> I love the way his face is lit. Yeah. He's Yeah. The, the the light in the eye just when you see the pupil popping out, yep. that, that's real that's creepy. You're not going to abort my kid. You're not going to tell me what to do. Yeah. It's, Get out. Like this is progr this is for 74? Way I mean, ahead of its time. First there's juicy cocks and piggy cunts. <laughs> <laughs> then there's fellatio. And now we're abortion. <laughs> You're right. This is Nightmare Five done the right way yeah. before it was even a glimmer. Even a glimmer, yeah. yeah. I like that. He's like, huh? Take a, interesting. That the cops take, take a glance at this guy. That classic detective mm -hmm. observation. Yeah, which is so fucking Saxon. And I love the way that he did a subtle like you could see him his wheels returning. Yeah, like ah. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. And I think he even asked a little bit about who that guy was or something. Tap written, on the phone. Written permission. At no point does this girl say there's two lines in the house. Huh. I don't know. Like, does yeah. nobody know? Like, I think it's weird. 
I almost half a match is maybe Mrs. Max line. I don't know. It could they, be. They never fully right. They never pinpoint what room the other line is coming from. It would make sense if it's Max line. Yeah. Five. So five. It's Klondike nine. Thank you very much. <laughs> He is so great. Oh, he just he just radiates this this confidence on screen. It's, some, it's just magnetizing. He's definitely on my bucket list of people to meet, and I know he's like a hundred years old. And mm. it makes me sad that like he has stopped doing appearances. Yeah. Okay, well, got some just basic detective work going on here. Nothing too exciting. It's kind of odd that, that poster in the background looked almost like the poster from Princess Bride. Eleven years early, with the tool. Oh yeah, the, uh, the looked, yeah yeah very much like that. This is uh, I'm I'm getting flashbacks of my childhood. When we used to, uh, like, prank eat, well, not prank, really, but um, we would take apart the the phone. Okay. Um, and in the handle of the phone, like in the mouth part, you could unscrew that bottom part and the, the talky, like, phone, the microphone part <laughs> was a, an individual piece. Um, and if you flipped it upside down... <laughs> And then rescrewed the top back on. <laughs> the person talking on the phone, like backwards. The, it it would well the piece was backwards, so the person on the other end couldn't hear them. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, then you'd call <laughs> and they'd be like, Hello, hello, hello and then you I can't they're talking and you can't hear them. And then it was like, ha ha whatever. Uh, <laughs> so I I have this memory of being like, you know, eight, nine, ten years old and like taking apart people's phones and fucking <laughs> with them. <laughs> So that's what this is making me think of. <laughs> He's like taking apart this rotary phone to put a bug in it. Not that we had rotary phones, but the whole you know hand yeah, yeah. handle receiver of it. Because every house had those kinds of phones in them mm -hmm. when we were kids. Yeah. You know what uh, Saxon's missing? A hunter green jacket with yes. fur lining. He's going with the overcoat here. If his jacket was the color of this dude's sweater. He's not even wearing a coat. That's why he's a psychopath. That's right. And he's lurking around. Oh. Frank goes home and takes cold showers. Hmm. <laughs> 20 degrees I was taking a cold yeah. shower. His Chris, the one she's asking about, Chris. Yeah, his fur coat guy. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to know what happened to her fat Jew boyfriend. Yeah. Mr. Fro. Right. I mean, it's like George Costanza with a half fro. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to bed, Martin is. <laughs> It was a nice little scene there. She's got emotional, saying, I know she's dead. Like, yeah. Again, it's very... Now, I can't even say that it's atypical for a horror movie because horror yeah. movies didn't really exist at this point. I mean, and, 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 yeah, in this form. In this format, yeah. I do think that every time I've watched this, I've liked it more. Okay. So, <clears throat> this is actually only the third time that I've ever sat through it. Okay, I've, um, I've, been wa I've watched this film quite a lot. Quite a lot? Over like last 18 years or something. Um, I think this is very interesting. Yeah, I, um, I, I 
I'll, I'll get into it once once they they get into it. Um, I've always thought that phone tapping. I mean, now it's all like cell towers. Yeah. But. I, I don't know. I just think there's something about... Uh, I guess because I don't really understand how phones work. Mm. You know what I mean? In general. Mm -hmm. Oh, he put a baby doll with her. How cute. <laughs> oh, <geez>. um, <clears throat> oh, and he's rocking her. I don't think I noticed... I mean, I guess that yeah. would make sense because she's dead and she can't rock herself. Yeah. Um, something about the... Like, this dude's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Uh, I guess, like I was saying, I don't really know how phones work <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Like, everybody's got one and we all use them. Yeah. But, you know, I don't really understand the mechanics of, yeah. like, telephone lines and <clears throat> mm -hmm. connections and yeah. whatever. And you have the old patch board and everything. Right, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't really understand it. <laughs> yeah. Um, So I think it's fascinating. And the whole idea of you have to keep them on the line. Mm -hmm. Um for X amount of time in order to trace the call. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just cool to me. <clears throat> They've been exploiting that for freaking decades at this point on, like, TV shows. Every cop procedural does that shit. Another great, well-lit shot Yeah, I, I really like how they're shooting that, how they're shooting the thing with Saxon there with the phones. This is great. Mm -hmm. She's passed out drunk. She needs a drink. That's what's the matter. <laughs> She's asthmatic. Isn't it a little late in the story to be... <laughs> We're over an hour in. <laughs> Isn't that a little late to be introducing new evidence like this? Yeah. Like, she should have had to puff on that thing yeah, at the I, very beginning. I mean, I, I've, I've got a little bit of asthma and whatnot. And I've never seen you puff on a thing. No. I haven't had an inhaler in years. Which is shocking year, because in, in years. the amount of times you've been worked up over these commentaries. <laughs> I thought, Usually it's cold air that would get... <laughs> if I was out shoveling snow or whatnot for 20 minutes, it would kick in. I thought I it. thought for sure that Halloween Five one was going to put you right <laughs> over the edge. I was like, I don't know, smokers and asthmatics kind of function. <laughs> Breathing in all that all that smoke and whatnot doesn't trigger off an asthma attack. I don't know. Well, all right, she's been smoking in every scene except yeah. this one. <clears throat> this is thus far the only scene in the whole movie where she hasn't been doing one of those two extra yeah. extracurriculars. Yeah. I don't get this anymore. Killer. What a shame. <laughs> well, first of all, I love vocal choir. <laughs> like a little harmony. Vocal harmonies. Um the vocals are my favorite instrument. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what is that an adult in the back or a real ugly man child? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um like I'm scared of that, whatever it is <laughs> in the back. Um, and this is just such a lost art. Yeah. First of all, there's no way that a group of nine individuals, especially children, mm -hmm. could sound like that <laughs> without like just assembling. Like yeah, they have to be, a, they just, have to be acquired. Just on a whim. Yeah. Right. Um, and then I don't know, like, I just don't see a choir even going, let's just go around and carol. Yeah. In I mean... 16 degree weather. If anybody wants to go caroling, somebody let me know because <laughs> I want to go. I will absolutely go sing outside of people's doorways. I, I, I want to do it right now. Maybe I'll go by myself. That'll get me arrested. This <laughs> crazy <laughs> singing outside my door. Oh, he's singing Christmas carols? No, he's singing journey songs. Exactly. <laughs> you can't go journey caroling in the holidays? I don't know. I think that's appropriate. <laughs> Steve Perry shows up on my door. I'll sit there for an hour. Darn right you will. Should have been gone. <laughs> oh. 
Now, that's creepy. So we've been digressing yeah. a little bit here. Meanwhile, there's some really creepy shit yeah. going on. It is gorgeously shot, this whole sequence. I mean, it, this sequence, I, I just feel it's just, uh, just a matter of brilliance, in my opinion. I mean, he's you, whispering gib gibberish. Yeah. You got the beauty of the carolers outside, and then you got this terror inside. Yeah, the juxtaposition. Juxtaposed, juxtaposed yeah. it, and you got these <clears throat> beautiful shots with with, with 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 the crystal and everything. I mean, jeez. The bloody unicorn. It. Oh. This is this is really great. I mean, as, 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 bravo. As, that's masterstroke stuff right there. Oh, that is the adult, the chaperone, wearing the uh, Technicolor dream coat there. <laughs> She's a short lady. Oh, and a little tip. A little something. Well, there's no saying that she was murdered tonight. <laughs> I guess, I mean, the the murder of the little girl really does add some good backdrop. Yeah. For, not some, mis I wouldn't even call it misdirection. Business. Yeah. A little business in the background. It's just. It preoccupies all the other characters, so she's left here isolated. I always kind of, I always kind of like a film like that, where there's this kind of like background energy going on. That's stuff like that, where you got this more intimate story happening in the foreground. There's more of this, this urgency in the background with something else going on. <clears throat> so. So yeah, it's like. See, th this whole sequence, I love this because it's like dated in a good type of way. You see all this analog technology they have to use for the the progression of the plot and everything that, like you said, you you didn't care for the remake at all or anything. And they I did not. They couldn't do this type of thing in the right. remake. It all has to be more modern stuff. So, I mean, it's got to be handled in a completely different fashion. You can't do this same type of setup and have this guy running around between all these we, these big machines and the the phone company and everything and this feel this style whatnot only fits for the time period it's made in. And, and even and, though and it's it dated, though, it works towards its benefit. <clears throat> is what I'm saying. Even though it's dated, it still holds up, though. And it's fascinating. Yeah, to watch. it's intriguing. Now. What pisses me off, and what I maybe it's my lack of knowledge of how everything works, but it looked like the guy was coming down one aisle and had kind of thought maybe he had found the spot. Yeah. Why doesn't he just stay right there mm -hmm. and start right there mm -hmm. the next time? Yeah. Like it shouldn't take a whole another ten minutes. Yeah. Like you already have what you believe to be a, a starting halfway, point. A halfway point. Right. Where are you going? <clears throat> What is happening out there? A man's got his some, pants down. Some dropping trowel. Like a buckshot. Oh, trespassing. Farmer John shot a cop. All right. <laughs> it's very colorful. <laughs> well, the gun going up on your on ass. <clears throat> you got buckshot going on. Fellatio jokes. And... <laughs> These two I love have the great flow, chemistry. Man. It's like buddy cop, only in a horror movie. <laughs> Look at this nightgown that Andrea Martin's wearing. <laughs> She was having a nightmare. Oh, 
Oh, that's right. We yeah. we were talking over that. Yeah. <clears throat> Definitely creating the misdirection. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I mean, if you're the viewer, yeah. like you, it really does set it up to believe that it is Peter. Yeah. And in some ways, it really makes the ending that much worse because you figure like okay if you're gonna set me up there better be a good other explanation okay um because it's either gonna be way too obvious or completely out of left field or clever yeah and i feel like they were neither although i like the ending it's just you want a hook is yeah what asking for it's yeah i feel like there's way too much effort put into it to have it really not it kind of dissolve itself right all machines are clacking according to the subtitles i like it <laughs> well this is this is they're saying this is act she's actually talking to peter now right this and is real all, peter he's all fucked up okay so wait this is good because this answers my previous question mm -hmm. he is now misdirected mm -hmm. away from the first call mm -hmm. in the warehouse yeah. of yeah. whatever yeah he's now going to try to find this one which is not the yeah. same spot yeah yeah like it's way better than i ever thought it was <laughs> It makes so much sense. Yeah. Look at this. What are these? Well, yeah, just it's it's how fascinating does this work? to just watch this stuff. I mean, and we still have what a half hour left on this thing. Yeah. Short of it. Yeah. He is such a good cop. <clears throat> yeah. So we are still in the same. Same stretch of a day. The it, same day. I mean, yeah. It's probably pretty, pretty late. In the, in the night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More or less. It's you're probably talking. Well. 10, <clears throat> roughly ten thirty. I'd I'd probably throw it out there ten thirty. I mean, can we get a shot of a clock somewhere? <laughs> the uh, old man was meeting to pick the dad was supposed to meet at one. Yeah. So you figure he gets a hold of the uh, guy with the good hair. Yeah. After one. Yeah. One he's, about a half past. Yeah. One. And then, I mean, they go to the this, cops and stuff. This, stuff then then with the, the daughter, the the thirteen year old, like this could very easily be midnight. Yeah. So she doesn't know that there's another line because yeah. he says he was here. So that yeah. actually walks it back a little bit yeah. as far as the misdirection goes. Yeah. So it's making it more, amb more ambiguous. ambiguous yeah. Ambiguity in this whole thing. She's a little stilted, though. You know, hello. This, you, is, this is really upsetting me. A little bit. It's like, eh. At least their, uh, you know, Andrea Martin's fears are subsided. Uh, there's an American flag. Well, it's not Canadian anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just misdirect you. That is strange. <laughs> that is strange, because it looks like that map that they're looking at looked like a map of Toronto, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> but why would they have an American flag? Because they're trying to make you think it's set in America. 
You're not fooling anyone. Was it an American script that just got picked up and made, produced in Canada? I I don't I don't remember. I I don't think there's much of any anything behind that. I think they're just trying to cater to a lar- the largest film market. I guess I don't know if you really had to put a flag in there to 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 make it be anything. <laughs> I like this. Two good uh do gooders. Yeah. <laughs> I like they're just going around with a shotgun knocking on doors and asking people for weird stuff. <laughs> and they're gonna keep they're gonna keep me safe <laughs> not in this film huh there's another American flag actually yeah, yeah. I like that he's stewing over this. Yeah. Okay, because he's connecting that this the guy that stormed out of the house earlier. He's called up with a very uh, erratic phone call about things. About the baby. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's there's motive and opportunity. We already, we already, he already knows there's a there's a dead kid in town. There's people missing. Is worth investigating someone who seems a little bit off kilter. Well, he does seem that. Yeah. Uh. Sorry, Agnes. Agnes. Or Phil. Her name's Phil. Uh, Phyllis. Phil. Is that Saxon? Yeah. Looking good in his hat and trench coat. Oh, yeah. And that piano has been destroyed. Uh-huh. R I P N O. R I P N O? R I P N O. No? Too soon? <laughs> <laughs> No, R I P H Y L L. Oh, the McHenry sisters. <laughs> that old famous duo. <laughs> I really am enjoying this much more this yeah. time than I ever have before. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you know, I like this camera work here. Just. Through the sl- the yeah, bars. it just, it just <clears throat> makes her seem more closed in. Oh, you yeah, here we go. Oh, pig, piggy, bitch. YouTube's gonna love our commentary. What's that? <laughs> YouTube analytics are gonna love our commentary. Their algorithms <laughs> flag us all over the place. Is do they? <laughs> is that how that works? I don't know. Nobody knows. They do shit. No, it's like the MPAA. Nobody knows what. <laughs> Whatever they feel like that day, they woke up on the wrong side of the bed and get flagged. <laughs> if there's actually anyone actually works at YouTube, I'm still questioning I, that. Yeah, who knows? <clears throat> I think there's like two people there. How'd they find him? <laughs> it's they, not like this is next. They probably door. had a. They probably had a patrolman drive him there. How do you know it was that one? I don't know. Now what is he doing? He's going to the other end. I don't know. He can see both ends? Or maybe he's... Okay, so so he found out which one it is. Now he's racing back to tell the cops which one it is. Because there's no wireless right now. He's got to get in the horn to the cops. And how'd they piece it in... 
Splice it into here. <clears throat> How are they able to hear it? How do phones work? <laughs> <laughs> phones work. I mean, this is creepy. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so yeah, well, whoever's room that is, probably Mrs. Max, because it's not occupied. I'm guessing, I don't know. I'm getting confused again. So here we go. Dun dun dun. Mm -hmm. The what year did when a stranger calls? Seventy nine. So five years later. Is that just a blatant ripoff then? I don't know because he also made because they also made a short film before that. Then they made the feature film, but he completely uses this entire setup. Two lines in the same house, and they're tracing the call through the entire this entire right. analog system. And everything is the exact same setup. Huh. I've never seen it. I've, I've seen it a few times. That entire scenario is like the first twenty minutes of the film. Oh. And the rest of it is a cop chasing the killer through through the streets about five years after it all happens. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's Charles Durning playing the cop, just hunting the guy down after he escapes from the mental institution. Well, okay, that's a little different then. It's a little dry, to be honest with you. After oh, that. okay. So, I mean, at least it's some a people different prefer take. It. I, I, I like. I prefer the sequel that was put out in the '90s. It's a little bit more streamlined. When a stranger calls back. Exactly. Don't ever watch the remake. It's awful. Sorry about that. A bit of a technical difficulty. We're at 122 even, 122.01. Yeah. So, if you want to... All right. Anyway. So, it, it bothers me that the cop is not very forthcoming. Yeah. And then, when, as soon as she questions it, now he's, like, yelling at her. Yeah. And he's having a poor reaction. Yeah. He... He's, a, he's, he's the cop that's had handled every situation in the film very poorly. But it, it's okay, though, because he's kind of a bumbling idiot. Yeah, yeah, well, that's the thing. <clears throat> but at the same time, at this point, he's almost lost credibility as a cop. Yeah, he so... can't take him seriously at all. The, the zoom in. Yeah. I mean, I guess, like, I always thought it was weird that she'd just stand at the front door and scream. But if she thinks something's wrong, yeah, she's not going to want to go up there. So yelling, please answer me, is actually pretty accurate, yeah. I think. Yeah. And I believe um, in that phone exchange the cop said to her that the calls were coming from inside the house is that correct yes and so now i mean there's a lot of like tension here yeah i like it and yeah. I love the lighting look at the you've got the uh I love that they're also now we're using the point of view with her 
He was that in the is same familiar language there. That is interesting. And the banister there with the in silhouette. Yeah. <clears throat> this movie's underrated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And whoopsie. Oh, here we go. It's so good. Like this is fucking terrifying. Never fucking underestimate a crazy eye. And it was like right there behind the door. Yeah. Like, how awesome. It was almost blood red. And here he oh. comes, and it, uh, that's, I mean, grabbing the hair, I know <laughs> that all too well. <laughs> I had a film projector grab me once. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Grabbed a whole tuft, pulled it right <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is a great setup. The slow burn really pays off. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of tension here, like you don't know where the killer disappeared to, where the door right. closed. Where did it go? Right. You're too afraid to leave. You're too afraid to move. You're trapped everything's, in the... Everything's fucking dark shadows. It's the creepy basement. I mean, we've covered a lot of films on this commentary series that didn't have the depth or the tension yeah or i mean even the basic story element mm -hmm. that this one has i completely understand why it's heralded as the you know grandfather of the slasher mm -hmm. film Even though Halloween, I still think, is the best horror movie of all time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just how, just everything this film does with just cinematography, that all of this light and shadow they do here, which, again, Halloween did, mm -hmm. and you know made. The what you don't see is more scarier, but then they were a little more revealing in Halloween because yeah. you were able to see that there was a killer. Yeah. And I also feel like Halloween is really 100% made better by the score. Yeah. This movie does not have... A, a prominent score. To right, it. it's right. It's very underscore... Just rumbling tension type of stuff. Well, there's been a lot of Christmas hymn, yeah. hymns, yeah. Yeah. which are both calming and eerie at the same time, yeah. which is weird, but it's true. And surprise, surprise, Pita is right on the other side of the door. Uh -huh. How convenient. And he also has a crazy eye. Yeah. neat how they did that right yeah Where they earlier in the movie they shone a light right on his eye yeah as if to say uh -huh. pay attention to these eyes yeah these eyes sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you know we had the close-up on the eye through the door hole yeah the killer disappears and now he's in the basement what the hell 
Finkel is Einhorn? <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how many times I jump up and down. <laughs> I've said that over the years. <laughs> I get the brain moving. The blood pumping. There's a close-up of her eyes. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it's just great how, how they use the, the foreground stuff and use the environment with the cinematography. You're not always looking for the clean shot. You're using what you have to, to, to close off and cut up the frame. Well, it's also keeping in that point of view yeah. mentality. Yeah. And he's just so fucking creepy. Well, even if... Okay, so even if you assume as the viewer that he is not the killer, yeah. you still have to keep in mind that he's... He's an erratic personality. He's neurotic and crazy and will destroy a piano at any moment, so what might he do to a human yeah. after saying... You're, you're I refuse. I refuse to let you abort my child, and I'm going to marry you. You are going to marry me. I mean, all the other stuff in the film aside, their contained story is a psycho thriller. The birdcage. <laughs> he looks good in a hat. Yeah. Well, Elliot Ness action there. Got that little revolver, the black gloves. And now, we're led to believe that she has killed him. Yeah, struck him with the the rebar there. And what happened to her? She's alive. Oh, she's good. Okay. Yeah. And now, this, okay, so this is actually pretty great, because the, you know, everyone has said, okay, it's over. Yeah. <clears throat> she got the guy. Yeah. And she's in shock that she's dated her. Oh, the fat Jew. So, okay, here's where I take umbrage. Mm. The dad is now here in the room. Yeah. He's still hanging out at the house. And he's not freaking out. He's not upset. Nobody's found his daughter. No one's even searched the house yet, apparently, because they haven't found the bodies. Right. Yet. they got to all draw yeah. straws and split up. Search the house. <laughs> am, I right in, am I right in saying there's so many... Someone else in this house, yes or no? No. Yes. No, there is yes. or no, there isn't? <laughs> no, yes. What was the question? Is there anyone else in the house? No. No. Say no? We're going to the whole goddamn movie now. See, so we draw straws and find a person. Oh, well, no. No, no, oh, no there we had go. too much. He's making pouty lips there. <laughs> He's looking for some uh, resuscitation. Oh, sure. He, they're going to move him. He's going to the hospital. He's going to the she, hospital. The girl isn't. He's been in a life-threatening traumatic situation. She so was this, found this in is... the basement with a bloody man in her lap that she herself murdered. They carry her up three flights of stairs. But... Old man Winter has a, a grabber, and now he's got to go to the... the... <laughs> <laughs> I, d I do like this scene, in that they focus on her, and yet the background noise is everything that else yeah. is going on. Yeah. Now we still don't really know that it's resolved it's resolved i mean i guess as a first time viewer you go okay yeah it's resolved i mean it, 
they, they found the two other dead because they looked in the other room easily. But they didn't go up in the attic at all to find the other two girls. Ladies. That's obviously Mac's room. Yeah. Because she had the suitcase. She was getting ready to leave. Yeah. There's our bad curtains. <laughs> and some sort of Chinese lantern hanging yeah. there. Weird. And all this is one shot, by the way. Yeah. A nice little tracking shot through the house. I was going to say it was nice when they're going past the, the frames with the reflective glass. Didn't see anything in there. Well, no camera crew, these, no these people are professionals. Indeed. And then they're singing. Which means, yes, there is somebody still left in the house. Billy. <laughs> nice rack. Great, focus. great rack. Great shot. I mean, got this whole crane going on and everything. Awesome. And then we pull back. And I love that, like, from this vantage point, you can see her in the window. Mm -hmm. But from down on the ground, you wouldn't be able to. No. If you climbed up in the tree to see it. And there's activity going on. Like, this isn't just a random <clears throat> pullout. Like, yeah, he's on the he's moving on the porch there. Obviously, yeah. a cop or somebody. Yeah, yeah. And the phone starts ringing again. And roll credits. Nice. That is really, really well done. Mm hmm. So usually these comments you usually get to the end of films like, that wasn't as good as I remember. I, you, uh, you went I, the other way around. I did. I went the other way. I, I swerved. I did a face turn on this one. <laughs> I mean, I've never disliked it. Mm hmm. But I was always just indifferent. Like, I thought it was just okay. Mm hmm. It's a little long-winded, a little bit. A little bit. Well, um, but when you really break it down, much like we've done with these other movies that I've always loved, and I, when we break it down, I go, eh, maybe not. Yeah. This one I went the other way on. Nice. Conducted by Paul Fraley. Oh, no, <laughs> not Fraley. Paul <laughs> Feely. All right. Feely. Yeah. Fraley was a different guy. Yeah. Nice short credits. We don't get well, yeah, that. we did them all at the beginning. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. No. It's all 20 minutes of 5 billion CGI artists. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know what else yeah. to say. There's no secret. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Just, we talked uh, as much of the remake as we need to talk about. So, I mean. I guess at this point, we just have to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, and yes. uh, hopefully there's no one in your attic. <laughs> <laughs> Happy holidays! And check to see if there's another line in your house. Otherwise, they're calling on a cell phone from upstairs. That's right. You're kind of fucked. Yeah, well. So, get out of the house. Well, you can't. Get out of the house. Get don't get don't out. go. Just walk to the just, door. Listen to, the, listen to us. Don't just, ask questions. Just pause the commentary. We'll be back later. Oh... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, guys, I mean, this was enjoyable. Yeah, it was great. It was great. So hopefully we, uh, you know, your your hectic holiday times have been, uh, you know, set <laughs> put down for a couple hours and <laughs> you've enjoyed some good old-fashioned murder <laughs> with us. But, uh, yeah. 
But uh, we got a little Die Hard 2 action coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, so. it's going to be great. It's going to be really put a bow on our Christmas season. Indeed. So, guys, so, uh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, 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 and uh, Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Bye.